Good morning, Heartland Church. How are you doing? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We're going to go through some announcements before starting our worship time. Quiet up our hearts a little bit. First of all, please turn off your phone now, your cell phone now. You are in the house of the Lord and he wants to talk to you. So do not allow anything to steal your attention. We do have our connection card. So if you are new at Heartland Church or if you have a prayer request, please fill out your connection card and let us know more about you. If you are only visiting or if you want to know more about us too, please, you find a space in that connection card and leave us your email address. Then we, we can have your email address in our list. This way you know exactly what's going on weekly in our church. Amen. We have our cry room. If you have a baby and you need to change a diaper or if you uh, just need a quiet time and you still want to watch uh, the service, we have our cry room available for you and your family. And the last one, we have our discipleship program starting on September. So we are starting a new discipleship program on September the 20th for both men and women on Wednesday nights, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Commitment will be every Wednesday night for nine months, and we will change. This absolutely will change your life. We have an uh, information meeting coming next Sunday after church. So if you want to know more, oh, Marcel, I'm not sure if I want to commit myself to that, but I just would, I would like more information, so you are more than welcome to be a part of that meeting with us will be next Sunday after church, okay? Right after service, we're going to be visiting with you, giving you more information about this discipleship program. It's just, it's going to be good. I can tell you, I can, I can, I encourage you to be a part of, at least of that meeting. There is a um, uh, uh, shit that you can sign in the Happenings, Heartland Happening Table is just by the door. If you want to be a part of that meeting, just give us your name and your phone number and we will contact you. So it will be Sunday, next Sunday, August 20, right after church. If you are interested, please sign up at Heartland Happening Table. Amen? Praise Jesus. So let me share something very quick with you before we worship. Last night I was trying to find something in my kitchen. I was looking for something in my kitchen and I... I didn't want to put the lights on because everybody was sleeping already. So I was trying so hard to find what I needed to find in my kitchen and it was so dark. Then finally after struggling for some minutes, I said I need to put the lights on. And then when finally I put the lights on, it was so easy to find what I needed. It was in my house. I knew exactly what that thing was, but I just couldn't find because it was still dark. John chapter 1 says that the light, Jesus came to the world to be the light for every human being. And the light came to the world and darkness could not resist the light of Jesus. The darkness could not stand against the light of Jesus. John also says that Jesus is the word of God. Psalm 119 says, your word, Lord, it's a lamp for my feet, and it's the light for my path. You are here today, this morning. You are not here by chance. You are here because the same way that I was struggling last night to find something in my own house, in my own life, in my kitchen, because I couldn't see in front of my eyes, there is something in front of your eyes that you cannot see because the light of Jesus is just missing right there inside your heart. So in Jesus' name, you are not here by chance. Jesus brought you here this morning because he wants to enlighten your life. He wants to bring answers. He wants to enlighten your life. And he wants you to walk in the light of his presence. Amen? So let's pray. Please bow your head and just... Close your eyes because what Jesus has to do, it's inside your heart. 
It's nothing, something outside. Some people, they come to me, Marcella, how do you talk with God? I, I, I used to answer, actually, I don't talk with God. I listen to him inside of me because he lives inside of me. So God lives inside of you. Jesus lives inside of you. So it's not outside. It's going to happen inside of your heart this morning. Amen. So dear gracious Father, as we come to worship you, as we come to bless your name, Lord, Allow us to listen to your voice inside of our hearts. Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ to be the light to this dark world. And Lord, now we surrender fully. We surrender everything in us to everything in God. And Lord, we pray that no hindrances, that no hindrances will remain in this place. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, and by the power of your angels operating in this place, Lord, all the darkness has to flee, Lord, and only what comes from you shall remain in this place, Lord. We pray that your Holy Spirit will move freely in this place. We pray, Lord, that chains are being broken as we speak the name of Jesus, as we praise the name of Jesus, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. We, Lord, going to see deliverance and signs and wonders and miracles happening in this place, Lord, because we believe for it. Lord, what I pray here this morning that nobody's going to leave this place in the same way they came into this place, Lord. But what do you have for them, Lord? Allow them to receive. I pray, Lord, that as Pastor Troy preaches the word, the word of truth, the word of God, faith will be raised in this place and they will line up their minds and their hearts and they will receive, Lord, what only you can give to them. This is what I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Welcome Heartland Church. Let's just rise. Um, we just want to welcome any that are visiting this morning. We just want to let you know that this church is, is bound in love and unity through Jesus Christ. And we just welcome you here today. And as we get ready to worship and praise our King and Savior, I just want you to know that with our praise and our, our words that honor the Lord, it hosts the very presence of Jesus. So we are getting ready to host your presence, Father. And I just want to invite any of those that want to come up and worship, feel free to come up. We have flags up here, especially the little children, because you know Jesus put that within us to worship him. It's not about us. It's about him and honoring his name. And in Psalm 6 or 8, it says, even for the children, God, you have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. So even the children have the power to silence the enemy. And we do too because we have the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. Amen. Amen. Father, you are most welcome in this place. We honor you today, God. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords.
this way the mountains move into the sea the nations rage i know my god is in control the oceans roar you are the lord of all the one who calms the wind and waves and makes my heart be still Rage. I know my God is in control. Oh, God is in control. You make my heart be still.
a word over over my children, over my family, I bleed the blood, I bleed the blood. Over my future, and over my body, I bleed the blood, I bleed the blood. Over our schools, over our city, I bleed the blood. break any legal contract that has been made with you and we break it now in the name of Jesus and ask your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, bring your Holy Spirit into this place like a cloud that's so heavy that you can't see anything but Jesus Christ. Touch every single seat, touch every single soul. I ask right now that you fill up my brother Troy. Speak through him, block his flesh right now in the name of Jesus. Let his flesh not talk, let only you talk. And I pray this in your precious, holy, and heavenly name of Jesus Christ. Amen. John 2, 1 through 5. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and the disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Good morning, Heartland Church. How are you this morning? Is it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, worshiping Him? You know, sometimes it seems like it's chaos, but the Lord did say, let the little children come to me. And I'm telling you, that brings glory to God when kids are up here worshiping. So nothing's out of order, amen? Nothing's out of order. When Jesus shows up and the children are sitting around, his spirit shows up first and they see him coming unannounced and they say Jesus is coming Jesus is coming they can feel his presence I'm here to ask you today do you feel his presence in your life do you feel his presence in your life 
Because he wants you to feel it. He wants you to experience who he is. God wants you to experience who he is in a way that you've never experienced him before. You know why? Because he's making a big push for his kingdom. And he wants to include you in that push. Taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Those are blessed who make him their refuge. Psalms 55, 8 says, I want to run far from the tempest and the storm. I'm going to run to his shelter. I'm going to make him my refuge. Who wants to be under his covering today? We sang about the blood. Who wants to be covered by the blood? Who wants to be protected so the enemy can't come across that line? Man, I've been thinking, I, I don't know why, I guess because I was a kid, I like to build sand castles, but I've been thinking about sand a lot lately, just entering my head, the beach, the sand, the lake, everywhere you go, there's water, there's sand. We all like to put our toes in the sand. Jesus drew a line in the sand. He started talking to me about the line in the sand that he drew with the Pharisees and the adulterous woman, and he chose her over them. Because they chose their way. See, Jesus would have accepted the religious leaders, but they chose not to accept him. So he drew a line in the sand. Well, that line in the sand is still there where his fingerprint was and is today in your life. He's drawing the line in the sand all the way across, and he's saying, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let me ask you today, what side of the line are you on? Are you on the side that gives in quickly when man speaks? Or do you stand firm and don't follow man and follow Christ? The Lord says, I laugh at the strength of men's legs. He laughs at our armies. He's the ruler. He's the reign. He's the authority. He's the power. He's the living God. He will change your life because he changed mine and I was a wretched sinner. Change is coming. Change is coming. Do you receive it today? You know what? When I wake up in the morning and I put my feet on the floor, I say, Jesus is there. When I walk in the kitchen and see my beautiful wife, I say, oh boy, Jesus was really there. When I see food on my plate, I say, Jesus is here. When I walk to work and I see my employees, I say, Jesus is here when I open that door. When I get in my truck, I say, Jesus is here. When I look at the blue sky, I say, Jesus is here. When I look at the rain that falls on the drought of the land, I say, Jesus is here. When I see the lame walk and the sick be healed and the deaf here, I say, Jesus is here. Don't tell me that God doesn't heal people. I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. And if he hasn't healed you yet, you keep asking, you keep praying because he's about to show you something. And sometimes he's working out the details of your life through that situation. But if you declare his word, it becomes powerful that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can walk through this problem. I can walk through this storm. Because I know my Jesus is blessing me on the other side. He's right here with me. Most often, always often, through the storm, the sun shines afterwards. And when it gets dark, he's there. In the midst of the night, he's there. When you're crying on your bedstream, he's there. When you're crying on your pillow, he's there. When you're sleeping, he's there in your dreams. I've seen him in my dreams. I've seen him put a hand on a young man on a park bench in my dreams. He's real. He's there. And he wants to make himself known to you in ways that he's never done before. But sometimes, somehow we put God in this box. We need to marvel at his presence. We need to be astonished at what he's done for us. 
and he wants to do so much more than that today. He wants you to show that your faith creates fruits. He wants to, thank you, Misty. Misty texted me that this morning, and I was sitting there reading the word, and everything I read, then ding. I hear my phone ding, and there was a text. Work takes effort. That's what the Lord told her. But faith shows fruit. I was like, wow, that'll preach. What does your phone say? What kind of texts are you sending? See, I can tell a person if they're filled with the Holy Spirit by reading the text that they're not sending. What do you mean by that, Troy? I mean that when Brian is on vacation and he's driving back, where's Brian? Is he? Hey, buddy, there you are. He was in Colorado at the youth group, and all of a sudden, bam, Brian's on my heart. Brian's on my mind. Lord, what do you want me to send him? Troy, tell him that he's more than enough. Tell him that he's more than equipped. Give him encouragement. And I sent that to him because I was listening to the power of the Holy Spirit while I was working. And Brian, you texted me back and said, Troy, how did you know us? I didn't know. I didn't know. Jesus did. But he sent that to you to encourage his life at that moment. He said it was great timing. God knows when the ship needs to come in, and he knows when it needs to sail. And he knows when you need to go to the other side and sit in quietness and spirit for a while. Guys, listen. If the church is listening, and I know, Cynthia, I know you listen then we're sending words of encouragement. We're sending scripture. We're pleading the blood of Christ and we're sending that in text at just the right time when people need to hear it. If you're not doing that, then encourage you to change your prayer life. And I don't just mean at home. I don't just mean in the quietness of your closet. I mean in your work truck. Can you hear God in the midst of the storm when the wind's blowing? I can. Now, granted, I take times where I need it to be quiet. But when you get on a level with the Lord and the storm is raging and the tornadoes are crashing in, you can still hear Him. You know how you can hear Him? He's like that little moth fluttering in your ear. He doesn't scream. He doesn't shout. It's a calm, cool voice that comes in and says, Troy, I'm right here. I'm right here, Jim. I'm right here, Jim. pray healing over your life. I pray, Father God, that you touch him and heal him and everything he's been asking. You just raise him encouragement and healing by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. Heal my brother. Touch him now, Jesus. Jesus. God is speaking over his people because guys when you read his word it says that he heals people and that he loves people and that he wants to spend time with you and if we're tuned into the right station you're going to give somebody a whole lot of Jesus that's how we do it in a small town that's how we do it in a small town we take a stand for what's right we take a stand for we seek after his face with everything we got. Turn to that scripture, Ryan, in, in John there, chapter 2. Let's read this great miracle. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, does your concern have, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Listen, for a moment, that verse right there stirs in you. When, when Jesus said, Woman, what does that have to do with me? It, it kind of all of a sudden didn't set well. I'm like, wait a minute. Jesus wouldn't say something offensive. He wouldn't 
call his mother out in front of everybody in a derogative way. But when, when you study the Jewish culture and the Jewish word, what he really was saying, because our Western culture sometimes changes the meaning of Scripture. So you've got to dig a little deeper. What he was saying was, Madam, Mom, my hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. But listen to what Mary says. His mother said to servants, whatever he says, you do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the, bride, the, master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of the signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Now, there's several ways that, that, that you can dig into this chapter, that, that you can go with this. I could have titled this The Separation from His Mother. What do you mean by that, Pastor Troy? Jesus was declaring when he said, Madam, my, my hour has not yet come. Jesus has to get to the point with his mom Mom, I no longer in a certain way serve you, but you will serve me. Mom, yes, I'm your son and I, I will obey you, but, but listen, I now become your savior. Our relationship changes. I'll always be your son, but you need to see me in a new light. The separation between, between mother and son was happening in this first moment. There had to be a breaking of a way where the bride and groom Leave a mother and father that it may be well with you. Where the two become one flesh and me. Jesus is saying, I am the bridegroom and he's going to return for the church. Mom, I've got to let go. You've got to let go of me. We've got to do things differently now. There was a separation before this miracle. And yet it's like Jesus said, my hour had not yet come but yet he still performs the miracle because faith produces fruit. What did Mary say? Servants, hey, whatever he says, do, get ready. Mary had faith, but it wasn't Mary who was deciding God's hour. It was the Father pouring those words into Mary, and Mary spoke them out. Mary didn't decide when Jesus is... religion could learn a lot from this chapter. Mary's special and she has her place, but she's only the mother of Jesus and she did her job well, but we do not worship her. She cannot save you. Only Jesus can. And if you search this chapter, you'll see the separation that Jesus says, Mom, look at me a different way because it's your own good. You have to see me as, as your Savior. Jesus' own mother needed him to save her. She doesn't go to heaven without him. Guys, keep your eyes on Jesus. We become what we focus on. And there in that, that moment, Mary says, do what he says, and the servants don't hesitate. And he takes these six pots, and they're 20 gallons or more. And, and you know what's unique about these pots? They were there for purification. They were there for a religious purpose to wash their feet before the ceremony. And God takes religion and he fills it with his abundance and his overflowing and his joy and a symbol of his blood and he turns it into something perfect and that tastes better. God has a different flavor for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercy will endure forever. 
They got to taste what it was like to follow Jesus, to be in the same room with Jesus. They got to taste that. Woo! Man. There it was, filled to the brim. And, and that fruit of the vine. When we take, when we take communion, when we, we fill the cup, it's often, it's often grape juice. It's often juice from the vine. It's from grapes. Listen, we, this is where some of the churches miss it. That doesn't give you the legal right to be a drunk fest. Well, Jesus changed water into wine. Did you probably know that that wine was less than 1% alcohol or it was grape juice? Christ. There he was, his first miracle, and he chose to change water into wine as a symbol of his blood. And the first miracle he did was poured out. Robert, it was poured out and put in their hands. And Jesus says, I'm going to do that on the cross. I'm going to pour myself out. I'm going to put myself in your hands. A symbol of his shed blood. It's yours. The cup is, the cup is never empty. Do you know that those pots also resembled when they're they were full to the brim. He didn't fill them half full. He filled them. And he filled them with joy. And he filled them with an abundance. You know why there's joy in there? Because there's joy in the blood. Because blood defeats the enemy. And the blood defeats your problems. And the blood brings healing in your life. And the blood gets rid of depression. And the blood gets rid of anger. And the blood gets rid of anxiety. Because the enemy can no longer attack. If you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Savior, I beg you today to search your heart. Jesus, come into my life. Because I want to, you're not going to God's kingdom without Jesus. He'll walk you there if you let him. But you've got to stay attached to the vine. Let me tell you about the vine. Pull up John chapter 15, Ryan. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes, whew, he takes away every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that, it may bear more fruit. Listen, God's in the business of, of changing your life around so you can bear fruit. What is bearing fruit? It's walking around with joy. It's walking around with peace. Right, brother? Amen. It's walking around with healing. How are you today, Virginia? You're happy, you're joyful. Thanks for worshiping God. Thanks for, for starting these, the younger generation in, in the artwork of worship. Thank you. Had a whole pew there today. Whole fam Talk about joy. Your family's serving God. Your family's in church. Your family's here to worship, and they're going to His kingdom with you. Keep believing. He'll raise that child in the way you go. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. We got a tough job. Man, some days I just, I love preaching. Because God fills my heart with his words. And then he gives me a love for you guys, and I care about you guys, and I don't want to see anybody not make it to his kingdom. And you don't have to work for it. You just receive it. And give back your relationship and your life to him. That's all you got to do. And then go change somebody's tire along the side of the road. You should do that anyway. Where was I? 
You already can clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Woo! If you stay attached to Jesus, you bear much fruit. That's like a milk cow on the right kind of hay. She's going to produce. Amen? I know milk cows. Right? Those of you who don't know, I grew up on a dairy farm. I know cows. And when you feed them right, they produce. And when you feed the body of Christ right, they produce. But some of that's on you. Not just on me, not just on Pastor Marcella. Some of it's on you. If you ain't digging into the Word, and you ain't worshiping with Carrie and Virginia and Josh and the crew and KJ, that's on you. God is good. He bears much fruit, for without me, God says you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Guys, close your eyes. And I want you to ask God what's on your heart right now, sir. Just say it quietly. You don't have to say it out loud. No one else needs to know. But what are you asking God for? Ask Him for it again. Father, hear your people. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Father, we give you the glory. And you said to ask, so we're going to ask according to your will. And you're going to work each situation out, Lord. Father, I'm asking that hearts will be changed. I'm asking that lives will be saved. I'm asking for an abundant overflow of your spirit upon your people. I don't know what you ask God for, but he knows. He knows. He wants to pour himself out for you, and he already did. When they were pouring that first cup, Jesus saw himself being poured out as a sin offering. That's why he changed water to wine. That's why he did that first miracle. And there's seven more, six more miracles in the book of John. And John's the only one that somehow recorded this miracle that somehow Mary must have knew in a manner where she panicked. But she ran to Jesus and said, I need your help with my problem. Jesus, we got a problem. We're out of wine. We're out of grape juice. She knew he could fix it. She didn't go to anyone else. She went right to Jesus. Guys, don't look for man to solve your problems. Look for Jesus to do that. Look for Jesus to do that. This morning I was walking out in my barnyard like I often do and praying and Carrie and I have a a little vineyard or, or a vine what do we call that Carrie? Grape arbor. <sighs> and on the grape arbor I had just trimmed this thing two weeks ago. But this was hanging down. And when I go to lock the chickens up at night in the dark I'd run right into that. It's like a spider web. You're like, Ugh. And so this morning I was like that's it. I hit my face on it while I was praying one last time. And I said, Jesus, you're, you're the vine and we're the branches. And if I cut this vine off, it's not going to produce anymore. And you're going to throw it into the fire. Lord, I don't want to be thrown into the fire. I don't want my friends and my family to be thrown into the fire. So God, where you need to prune me so that I would have faith to produce fruit. Then, then do that, Lord, so, so that when I am pruned and you work in my life and that I put you first, then the grapes of fruit are produced. 
the harvest comes in. And I walked over and I saw these little grapes. And I said, Lord, I'm, I'm going to harvest those because you're the vine dresser. And God creates fruit. Our faith creates fruit. Our diligent to prune the things out of our life that need to be pruned. Hi, Simone. Create fruit. You know that I love you, right? Amen. It creates fruit. Ask God today where you need to be pruned that he might create fruit. And your fruit will pour into somebody else's life. I want to show you an example. I'm going to put some of you on the spot. Of how the Spirit works when you're full of the fruit. Okay? And so, Carrie, come up here for a moment. And Carrie hates to be in front of people. And, and you, you got about a minute, okay? I'm going to bring several people up. Or just, you can be 15 seconds. I just want you to say what's on your heart. There could be one word. It could be change. It could be prosperous. It could be whatever. But show them the fruit. Is that on? Check. Now you're on. I think you're on. Testing. Well, there went 10 seconds. I was, hey, I was kind of hoping that didn't work so her and I could get a little close and she could use this. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, when I think about the fruit, I think about love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering, gentleness, mm -hmm. goodness. And those are all the Father, and those are all His characteristics. Mm -hmm. And when He is in us, those become our characteristics. Not by anything that we do, but just because we are carriers of His presence. That's good. Was that good? She can do it. All right, love you, honey. Jack, come on up here, brother. Tell them what's on your heart for a minute. I haven't talked to any of these people. I think it's interesting that Troy was just talking about faith and, and fruit uh, because uh, I was just saying the other day that if we are walking in faith, there will be fruit. Mm. So people are going to see the fruit that's being produced by our faith. So if there is no fruit, if there's nothing fruitful coming from our life, then we have not yet began to walk by faith. And so uh, as we were studying today in James, uh, that's, that's pretty much what we're studying on is, is faith and, and wisdom. And wisdom also comes by faith because when we step out in faith, we become obedient and we receive the wisdom that God wants us to have in order to achieve his goals, which then produces that fruit. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Misty. Brian, last time I called her up here, I got a really bad look, and you, she had her eyes closed because you were asking her to marry you, but she didn't know why I was calling her up here. Remember that? Yeah, I took the brunt of that. Jesus loves you. Um, <laughs> um, some of the greatest people in the Bible had to do really hard things. I mean, 
mean, who would have thought that when God told somebody to stretch out their hand that was withered, it would work? Mm. Who would have thought that God would have sent a blind man to wash himself in water that he couldn't even see to get to? Why would God have made a man that was centuries old to bear a child that would bear many children? Why would God use a virgin to bring his son? And then additionally, the last thing I wrote is remember that works are the result of effort and fruit are the result of faith. Amen. That's awesome. Scott. has been on my heart really all year has uh, been growth. Mm. And, uh, if a, a branch is not, does not remain attached to the vine, it doesn't grow. And it's, it's our responsibility as God's people as a church to grow. And to uh, grow in Him. And uh, so yeah, we got to be pursuing with everything we got. Amen. It's our job. Amen. Thank you, Scott. Hey, son. Yep, come on up here. He's shaking his head no. Come on, son. Sometimes as a father, you got to push. <laughs> it can be anything you want, son. But. Well, I don't know if I have much, but talking about good fruit, I would also say something maybe that does happen if you're not attached to the vine what happens to fruit it rots over time so if you're not in the word of god and you're not pursuing him you might smell bad so <laughs> <laughs> i would say just pursue him and stay attached to god amen that was good son amen <laughs> cynthia you knew i was coming over here here's a lady that's full of spirit First John's is to practice righteousness. And when we practice righteousness, we grow with good fruit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance, faith. Against such there is no law. I thought it was interesting that Troy plucked this line this morning. So it was probably vibrant. It was, but it's poking me in the face. <laughs> But look what's happened to it. It's wilted. Apart from the vine, you can do nothing. Immediately, you're going to die if you're not plugged into the vine. So we've got to be connected to the vine in order to grow that fruit. Amen. In order to produce righteousness and practice righteousness, we've got to be connected to the vine. Because if we're not connected to the vine, we're going to die and we're going to be thrown into the fire. And who gets thrown into the fire? Those who don't practice righteousness. If you read right before that verse, it talks about the lawlessness. So if we're not practicing righteousness, we're practicing lawlessness. And we're going to get thrown into the fire. And we don't want to be in the fire. Practice righteousness. Amen. Kind sister. You know I'm going to leave you out, right? I just, I just want to close saying that the one who tastes the fruit, it's God. The, the fruit, it's supposed to be sweet. The, the fruit, it's supposed to be juicy. But people will not taste the fruit. When you obey the Lord and you practice righteousness, you practice patience, love, kindness towards people, you are not doing because of them. You are doing because of Him. And He is tasting the fruit in our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Did you guys see what just happened? 
You know what I saw? I just saw the fruit. I just saw the fruit. I could have had many more of you come up here and speak, and I didn't speak to any one of those, but, but here they came with the word. That's how the Holy Spirit works. He doesn't, he doesn't just do that in me or pastor. He does that in you. In you, Daniel. In you. Jacob, he does that in you. You're going to have a word for somebody. That's why I started. Do you see how the text works? Everything they just said could be put in a text and almost sent to somebody. Well, yeah, Garrett. Okay. Thank you, buddy. You know, um, I was talking no, with thanks. a friend uh, on, uh, on texting the other day, and... Uh, I said, if you ever need a pastor, you need somebody to talk with, you're able to get a hold of me or like, you know, where I could set you up with my pastors and they can help you. And she said, where have you been? You've helped me a lot. Mm, amen. Keep up the good work, Eric. The Lord's still using you. Do you see what I mean? We all have different people in our lives and all different people we can reach. Worship team, will you come forward? Listen. And, and, and Jake, you didn't think you had much to say, but that was powerful. That put a whole different angle on the people that came before you had an angle, but God just talked about the rotting fruit and Cynthia tied it together. That was good. And so don't think, hi, Daniel. All right, come here, buddy. I'm going to preach with my grandson in just a second. Does anybody care? Hi, bud. Come on. Woo! Can you say woo-hoo? He might have something to say. But, but listen, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Those are all the things of the Spirit that God wants to put upon you. And then you can send people to the text, the true text. This is a living, breathing, active Word of God that will change and bring healing to your life. It'll bring healing. Who doesn't want that today? The power of the living God. Because see, we we have a responsibility right here, right? Have a responsibility to train them in the way they should go. You guys, Jesus loves you more and more and more tomorrow and the next day. More than you'll ever, ever, ever know. So let's worship Him. Let's praise Him. And let's take joy in what God is doing in the world today. The enemy can't scream louder than God. It may seem like it, but it's not true. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets the Father except through Him. Amen? Amen. Let's worship. There's a theme in this next song, and the theme is praise, and it's talking about fighting your battles. And we sing a lot about our families today, and the way we can fight for our families is through praise. And uh, yeah, that fruit, that really spoke to me myself.
Yes, Lord. Listen to this, church. Because maybe this is you today that is feeling so, so, so far from Jesus. Maybe it's you today that is feeling, Lord, I don't feel connected to you at all, my Lord. Lord, you are the true vine. And Lord, I just feel like I'm drying up far from you. Because Jesus is the true vine, and the enemy, Satan, he's the thief that came to kill, steal, and destroy. But listen to this, church. Nothing can separate you from Jesus' love. 
accept sin, accept what you are deciding to do with your life. So today, I have in my heart to pray with you, for you, guide you in this prayer. Just repenting and just declaring by faith, Lord, I'm not accepting the temptation. I'm not accepting, Lord, to walk in sin anymore. Doesn't matter what the enemy is convincing me to do, what he is telling me to do. I know that Jesus is with his arms wide open towards me, and he's willing and he's searching for me. He brought me here this morning, and he forgives me. He paid the price in that cross. So if this is you, Listen to this. The Father, it's with his arms wide open. And he is asking you, come, come close to me. I want to touch you to me again because I made a brand new way in my blood. When I died in the cross, I made a way for you in me. So there is nothing if you repent today. If you decide, decide, Lord, I don't want to walk in sin anymore. And Lord, I know that being connected to you, you're going to provide me the strength I need to resist the temptation. To do not walk in sin anymore, Lord. Because walking in sin, it's leading me to death. And maybe this is how you feel this morning. You feel you are dead because you are so far from Jesus. Or maybe you were feeling you were so close to falling dead. Because you were feeling that your relationship with Jesus is just so small. And all the circumstances in life, it's grown so much. But the good news is, He is the true vine. And He is asking you to come close to Him. So let's pray together. Dear and gracious Father, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die in that cross to forgive our sins. And Lord, we all are sinners. And maybe here, Lord, in this congregation, there are people that are sinning so hard and they know that they are far from Jesus in their hearts. But Lord, because your blood, you shed your blood to wash over our sin, to cleanse us from our sin. So Lord, I pray for those who are who are feeling that they, they are far from you, Lord. Just, just show your forgiveness. Allow them to feel your love towards them, Lord. And allow them to come close to you. Lord, I pray newness of a covenant with you, Lord, over their hearts, Lord. And they're going to walk with you in newness of life, Lord. And they're going to go through life, Lord. It's starting from today, Lord. They are go through life walking connected to you, Lord. And you will help them against temptation. You, Lord, will give your Holy Spirit, Lord, to convince them about sin, Lord. And they will go through life bearing many, many fruits. Because this is what you were calling us to do. Lord, I pray that your forgiveness just be real upon their lives lord and i pray that every day they can remember that apart from you we can do nothing lord we thank you for this wonderful morning in your presence lord we thank you lord because we could feel your holy spirit just moving so freely in this place we thank you lord for all the words prophesied over this congregation lord and i pray that their hearts will be like a fertile soil and the seed will grow, and they're going to bear many fruits. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you, give you peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah.